but, but let's talk about another aspect uh, of fiscal policy that happened when you were in Washington, and that's the Bush tax cuts. Now, a, a big issue, whether or not to uh, allow them to be extended for 10 years, that would cost $2.9 trillion, according to all the budget counters. How do you pay for that if you want to extend all the Bush tax cuts? First of all, it's hard for me to understand why you'd raise anybody's taxes in the middle of a recession. And secondly, uh, I think it misses the big point. You don't know that that revenue will show up. Uh, in fact, there's a good chance it won't. If you slow down growth, this, these ambitious growth targets, which are baked into the administration's own forecast, if you slow it down by just 1%, it costs you know, close to $3 trillion right there. Our entire focus really, Chris, in this country has got to be on reviving the private sector, the jobs that count and pay the bills for everything else. And so uh, we should be looking, I think, to perhaps even an emergency program uh, that, uh, uh, while not raising taxes, uh, opens the door or, or encourages uh, investment, not uh, this targeted uh, winners, and chooser, uh, winners and losers approach that we've seen lately, but in a macro way that encourages uh, the money that's sitting on the sidelines to come on the playing field and put people back to work. And how do you do that? Well, you could uh, incentivize, as we have on some past occasions, uh, investment made now. You could, uh, uh, you could offer some sort of a moratorium or holiday or uh, opportunity to speed up regulatory permitting, which it takes uh, sometimes forever to uh, make job-creating investments. You don't agree with Republican leaders who say tax cuts pay for themselves? They do not. Leader Boehner, he puts it right to you. The only way we're going to get our economy going again and solve our budget problems uh, is to get the economy moving, get more people back to work where they can care for their own families and uh, begin to expand the tax rules uh, to bring more revenue to the federal government. And what we have to do is we have to get our arms around the spending spree that's going on in Washington, D.C. But Leader Boehner, I'm sorry, you're, that, you're, not, you're not being problem. responsive to a specific point, which is how can you be for cutting the deficit and also cutting taxes as well when they're not paid for? Listen, you can't raise taxes in the middle of a weak economy uh, without risking a double dip in this recession. Uh, President Obama's favorite Republican uh, economist, Mark Zandi, uh, it came out uh, several weeks ago and made it clear that raising taxes uh, at this point in, in the economy is a very bad idea. But do you agree you that tax cuts cannot be paid for? Without a help. But tax cuts are not paid for. Is that correct? I am not for raising taxes on the American people in a soft economy. That's not the question, the Leader Boehner. The, the question is, wants to are tax cuts paid for or not? Listen, what you're trying to do is get into this Washington game uh, and they're funny accounting over there. You cannot get the economy going again by raising taxes on those people who we expect uh, to create jobs in America and to get the economy going again. If we want to solve the budget problem, we've got to have a healthy economy and we have to get our arms around the runaway spending that's going on in Washington, D.C. I, I just want to clarify this. I mean, I, I, if you, I'm relying on what Chairman Greenspan said, maybe if you're accusing him of funny Washington games. He says that tax cuts that aren't paid for uh, are, are not, they are not cutting the deficit, that they are not actually paid for, it's borrowed money. And so do you believe tax cuts pay for themselves or not? Uh, I do believe that uh, we've got to get more money in the hands of small businesses and American families to get our economy going again. And the only way to, to get that economy going again is to do that and to get our arms around the spending. Republicans want more tax cuts. It seems to be they acknowledge that they are not paid for, and yet at the same time they want tax cuts, but they're so worried about the deficit. How do you resolve that tension? Well, I think the, the way you resolve it is you focus on jobs. I gotta tell you, when I'm home in Muncie, Indiana, people are asking the question, where are the jobs? I mean, we have more than 14 million Americans unemployed. Uh, national unemployment is 9.5%. Uh, clearly, the economic policies of this administration, however well-intentioned, have failed. And we've got to do something different. And it's not, it's not just about preserving the tax relief of 2001 and 2003, David. It is, it is also about beginning to embrace the kind of spending discipline 
and reform. But Congressman, that you're will, asking will Americans to, to believe that Republicans will have spending discipline when you're saying extend the tax cuts that aren't paid for uh, and cut the deficit. How is that a consistent, credible message? Well, I, I understand the credibility problem, David. You know that during the first six years of this decade, I spent most of my time fighting against runaway spending under Republicans. I oppose No Child Left Behind. I oppose the Medicare prescription drug bill. I oppose the Wall Street bailout. What the American people are starting to see is that Republican, Republicans on Capitol Hill get it and that Democrats from the White House to Capitol Hill right. just don't get it. You just heard Carol Browner here on the show say that they're, they're intending, I think she said possibly, to use the lame duck session to pass a national energy tax. I mean, that, that, is, that is outrageous. What the American people know is necessary to get this economy moving again is get federal spending under control and preserve and promote the kind of policies and taxes right, but I just that will create So if you jobs. want more tax cuts, you would be very specific in saying how they'd be offset with spending cuts as well since they will not be paid for. You acknowledge tax cuts being extended cannot be paid for. It would be borrowed money. Well, no, I, I, I don't acknowledge that. I mean, the reality is that I, I think it's apples and oranges. It's mm -hmm. something that John Boehner was talking to you about. Here in Washington, D.C., they, they talk about tax cuts the same way they talk about spending increases as though the government owned all of the money. They say, that, are they paid for? Well, I think, I think deciding on a government spending increase is very different on whether or not we allow the American people to keep more of their hard-earned tax dollars. But as John Boehner just said, the most important thing right now is to get this economy moving again, to create jobs, and to get federal spending. But, but,